hello everyone in this session we will discuss about the next topic v curves and inverted v curves that v means v curves and inverted v curves right so here v curves means it is the relation between field current and the armature so field current and the armature current so this is the relation between so zero and this is the at this is the field current and x axis and in the y axis we have the two things we will take first v curve v curve means the relation between armature current and the armature current and the field current this is the armature current this is the armature current so it's look like a v shape look like a v shape that's why it is called the v curve and uh, this field current the uh, field current will be given based on the excitation so up to particular point up to this point it will be acting as the normal excitation so at this point it will be acting as the normal excitation mm, so at this particular point it will be acting as the under excitation sorry it's not normal excitation it is under excitation at particular point it will be normal excitation it will be the normal excitation so after the normal excitation point the excitation will be increases so that's why it is called the over excitation here the normal excitation means the reactive power required reactive power is enough to run the machine but under excitation means at this region the field current doesn't have uh, the required the field current doesn't have to maintain the voltage profile so here over excitation means we have the excitation more than the required okay right so this is the normal excitation now what is what is the power factor here up to the normal excitation in the under excitation the power factor is low and the power factor will be improved normal excitation it will reach the peak point and after that again increasing the excitation again increasing the excitation the power factor will be decreases so from zero to normal excitation the power factor will be reach at the peak point and after that it will be decreases it will be decreases so this is called this curve is known as the power factor this curve is known as the power factor so it's look like a inverted v shape that's why it is called the inverted v curve so inverted v curve right yeah so at this condition we can we can define another parameters those are like this so in under excitation condition the synchronous motor under excitation condition synchronous motor the reactive power will be absorbed reactive power will be absorbed and so in this it will be acting as lagging power factor lagging power factor so in the over excitation region at this point um, reactive power will be zero no absorption no absorption no delivery and it will be acting as unity power factor generally it will acting as a unity power factor and next and over excitation can condition reactive power will be delivered and in this region it will be acting as the leading power factor leading power factor okay yeah so this is about the armature current v and inverted v curves so v curve is the relation between armature current and field current and the inverted v curve is relation between the power factor and the 
power factor and the armature current power factor and the field current okay this is the very very important topic regarding this so same phenomena same phenomena will be applied for the generators but the generator in place of this it will be acting as a leading it will be acting as lagging this is only the difference between the generator and the alternator okay next next we will discuss about the effect of change in mechanical load effect of change in mechanical load under excitation is constant under excitation is constant so up to now we discussed about discussed about the some points re regarding some points regarding change in excitation like that but here we are discussing change in mechanical load but excitation is constant so we will have some analysis on this then we will continue the discussion so here generally the mechanical load is constant here the statement is mechanical load is constant when mechanical load is constant means the received active power is also constant active power is also constant so we can write active power formula ev by xs sin del will become the constant will become the constant okay here excitation itself a constant we are using the excitation constant e is constant and v also constant v also constant and what about excess excess depends on the frequency this is also the constant this is also the constant right here just observe here but the constant and here all are constant this is the constant and mm, next excess is the constant so p is v is also constant now if you observe here p is proportional to sin del only p is proportional to sin del only okay that is the thing we have to keep in your mind here the active power is proportional to the sin del sin del means sin angle of load angle sin angle of load angle right just we can write some statement as mechanical load increases mechanical load increases for example the power will be increases not mechanical load constant change in mechanical load actually it is change in mechanical load so not this is not constant thing actually it is a change in mechanical load actually but remaining all are the constant so this is the change in mechanical load right okay as mechanical load increases the power value increases when the power increases sin del value also increases when sin del value increases automatically the load angle value also increases so it will be acting for the different different cases the first is if we consider the leading power factor if the machine is operating at the leading power factor in the second case if it will be acting as the lagging power factor if we consider the two cases for the two cases we will discuss about the how it will be acting right for leading power factor generally synchronous motor acting as is delivers the reactive power the first thing and for lagging power power factor it absorbs the reactive power okay hmm next whenever the load is increases load increases what happen delivering reactive power is also increases so, sorry delivering reactive power decreases 
delivering reactive power will be decreases load increases because the load will take the reactive power and it will what is the reason the reason is the delivering reactive power is inversely proportional to the load here the delivering reactive power is inversely proportional to the load now we will give some statements regarding this here the load is generally proportional to the armature current and load current and here the load is proportional to the load angle and the load is proportional to the power factor okay these are the things we have to keep in your mind next whenever it is acting at lagging power factor the reactive power will be absorbed okay right when the load increases when the load increases the absorption of the reactive power will be increases not decreases so here the reactive power absorption is proportional to the load this is a different scenario this is a, a different scenario so finally we will give the conclusion is that power factor is proportional to load here in the leading power factor when the load increases power factor will be increases if it is acting at the leading power factor okay and here the load is proportional to armature current here load angle is proportional to load power is proportional to load in this case the power factor will be inversely proportional to the load inversely proportional to the load here the power factor is there and it is inversely proportional to the load so whenever change in mechanical load change in mechanical load when if you are using the excitation is constant that time if it is operating at the leading power factor the power factor is proportional to load when it is lagging power factor the power factor is inversely proportional to load okay so this is about change in mechanical load under excitation condition and about the vn inverted v curves okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you